Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. And Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, I trust you're feeling crisp this morning, that you're feeling blessed in Jesus, that you are happy to be a child of the living God. Today is September the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2017, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we spent several videos talking about an issue that seems to be very heavy upon my heart and probably upon many of the hearts of the people of God. You see, what I have learned in years of walking with the Lord is that our spiritual life is much like our physical life. If you take our lives as young children, when we were four, five, six years old, we were bouncing off of the walls. We were vibrant. We were spontaneous. We were quick to act. In short, we were uncontrollable. And this is where our parents came in and helped us to realize self-control that there were certain ways that we were not going to be allowed to act, certain things that we were not going to be allowed to say. And as we mature with proper training, we understand the importance of such self-control. Now, in relating this to our spiritual lives, more times than not, we see people who act upon emotion. And I'm not speaking of those who are outside of the realm of God, I'm talking about the people of God. And yet when we read the Bible, we see very little about emotion. We've discussed in the past Galatians chapter 5, the fruit of the Spirit. And what you see in the fruit of the Spirit is very little of emotion. We're all familiar with Psalm chapter 46 when we're told to be still and know that He is God. Now, if you take a four or five-year-old, you sit them down and you try to get them, you expect them to be still, that's difficult for them because that falls outside of their nature. And although we are considered the children of God, we're not expected to remain children. Paul said, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I became a man in God, I put away childish things. And so what I want to encourage you to do is really focus upon what the aspects of the fruit of the Spirit are. I invite you, I encourage you to go to Galatians chapter 5, around verse 22. Read for yourself what the fruit of the Spirit is. Really ponder those characteristics and see if they're alive in your life. I want to be very careful in saying this, but this is the truth of the matter, friends. God is more pleased with someone who has self-control and the ability to keep their own bodies under subjection as opposed to someone who may smoke cigarettes or someone who may come home from work and have a beer at night. Now, obviously, drunkenness is a sin, but a lot of times our focus is placed upon, well, let's just totally abstain from it. And yet there are those who will have an occasional beer, a glass of wine. But if you look at their life, the way that they act in front of others, around others, you see that there's something different about them than most people. Yet far too much significance is placed upon those who have just quit everything, but there's nothing about their life that shines. And that's the difference between religion and spirituality. Now, let me be clear. I do not drink. I will not even allow myself to have a glass of wine or a beer because I know what my limitations are. And as a person who was set free and delivered from that lifestyle, if I were to partake in that lifestyle, it would be my destruction. But there are some who can partake and it doesn't ruin their lives. So we can't throw everyone under an umbrella when it comes to these things that we should or should not do. But all of us, according to the Bible, should be able to keep our bodies under subjection. We should be in control of our own spirit, our own attitudes. And that brings us to our text this morning. I want to look at Proverbs 
chapter 25 and verse 28, which says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Now, this is speaking about having control over our own spirit but we must keep in mind what Jesus says. It's what comes out of the heart of a man that defiles a man. And many times that's the words that we speak. James tells us in chapter 3, beginning at verse 5, Even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. In verse 6, the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, and it defiles the whole body. It sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Verse 8, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. And that's true. No man can tame it. But God can, friends, and he will. Look at Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Look at Proverbs chapter 29, verse 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Look at 1 Corinthians, which is speaking about speaking in tongues in church. In verse 28, he says, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Let him speak only to himself and to God. And in verse 32, he says, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Now back to our text. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Now, when I began, I began with the correlation of our physical life to our spiritual life. And I reminded you and encouraged you to ponder Galatians chapter 5 when it speaks of the fruit of the Spirit so that your emphasis will be on what's taking place in your heart, that inner work of grace, and not to be so focused on what is going on outside. You see, you are responsible and you can tame what is taking place on the outside of your body. But you cannot change your heart. Only God can change your heart. And so won't you go before the Lord today and ask him, God, give me a heart of love. Give me a heart of joy. Give me a heart of peace. Give me a heart of long suffering. Give me a heart of gentleness, quietness, stillness. Give me a heart of goodness. Give me a heart of faith of meekness, of temperance, and teach me, O Lord, to be still and to know that you are God. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I love you, and I'm grateful, so grateful that you are here with us again this morning, and I pray that the Lord is doing a work in your life through his spirit, through his word, through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. And I'll see you on the next video.